largest software-defined open source platform out there. Um, and on top of that, we have a great community which makes the um, place a fun one to work on. Um, now, let's look at what we're doing specifically in the project. So last year, we had just moved to IBM. I didn't have the, the courage to show you our roadmap because it would change too fast. Now we are in more, on more stable ground and we can discuss what we did and what we're, we are going in the present 12 months. So this is what IBM just released um, in June. Like uh, we announced um, with Josh last summer in Vancouver, uh, we promised an NVMe of F gateway and we have delivered it. Now the IBM product has an NVMe of F uh, gateway that is mostly meant for supporting VMware where LibRBD and KRBD are not useful yet. <laughs> um, so in the MUF makes all the sense in the world. Uh, we have um, uh, cleaned up the picture very nicely there. The platform is storage certified for VMware. And it is also, it has a plugin to integrate with VMware and vSphere so that you can consume the storage in a VMware native fashion. So for those of you that are figure, trying to figure out how to move away from VMware, this is your replacement for vSAN. You can go to your management and say, I don't know how I'm going to move away from VMware, but at least the vSAN piece I can cover. And then once your storage is on set, you can attach that to whatever compute platform you decide to use. Other things. Uh, well, we um, declared NFS general purpose use, uh, which wasn't the case in our Red Hat days. So now there is an NFS 4, and as of uh, June, an NFS 3.2 um, support in the, in the stack. 3.2, the joke that goes around is that we did it for AAX, but no. <laughs> uh, the reality is that we did it for a Microsoft Windows server that has um, ancient NFS uh, clients. So that way we can support a Windows server as well. Um, other things that send out the um, um, RGW uh, uh, items are pretty self-explaining, so I'm not going to go there. We've done our usual rounds of uh, release by release enhancements to the dashboard. The one that's most noticeable there is multi-cluster management. Um, it's a little bit of monitor for monitoring for multiple clusters, and then you can jump in into the specific cluster that you want to manage to uh, carry a uh, specific action. There is a general effort to qualified performance of NFS, of NVMe of F, and um, for the next release of uh, backend compression, so that we can understand their performance better and we can advise customers better. Uh, this is the one going forward. This is our release for Q4 that's going to be called uh, IBM Storage Set 8 in the IBM product, and then it's going to spread to all of those um, other consumers of the platform that I mentioned. The big uh, line item here is that SMB will be in tech preview, which we've never done before in an enterprise product with Seth, so that's exciting. Uh, going from the bottom, I like the core options. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we've been working on um, and extending erasure coding options for small clusters. So there are a few um, 8 plus 6, 2 plus 2 that are meant for four node clusters specifically. Um, we're working on self-encrypting drive support in self ADM and uh, longer on the roadmap uh, for what would be the theories next year. There is upstream code for uh, TCM support of, um, of storing the OSD uh, encryption password. So more um, OSD encryption options coming. Uh, the, um, Crimson uh, backend is in tech preview with, with uh, partly Crimson, partly uh, Blue Store, uh, but it's the first time we show it in tech preview in the enterprise product, so that's pretty cool. We hope to get customer feedback um, there, but even if it's not, it's a good signal uh, that um, enterprise products are also moving in the same direction as the community. Um, there are a number of things going on in terms of NFS enhancements, and performance stuff that I mentioned. NFS for two support. There are a few things for OpenShift support. Um, uh, SnapDiff, which is interesting for backup, um, for backup use cases. 
And there is work towards RBD consistency groups, although that one will not make the eight or gives you an example of the fact that roadmaps are not committed at the vision. But I wanted to show you the exact roadmap that we use with customers. Um, there have been, um, there's been a refresh of ISV certifications that had lapsed in the last few years with RIPAC, and that effort will continue. And then uh, there are a few um, more um, RGW enhancements, which I think are also something we have here. So let's try to um, reclaim a little time. I'm going to hand over to Josh for the uh, So I'm going to talk a bit about uh, what's going on in the stream community in the set. I've um, been part of the OpenStack ecosystem for a very long time now. And I just want to mention a bit about where we are today. So today we're still a very large growing open source community. We have uh, lines of uh, contributors, thousands of lines of code, there's thousands of lines of code these days, and there's thousands of units, and all going forward in a very good pace. Um, as Federico mentioned, uh, there's a bit of a blip in many uh, uh, events like this uh, with the pandemic, but we got back to having a full Cephalog conference for Ceph uh, last year in Amsterdam. I was very successful having a lot of Ceph users and developers together and having very good uh, conversations. And we're doing this again in this year in uh, CERN in Geneva. So please, uh, if you want to hear more about Seth, uh, come out to that, that event and uh, look to see you there. We also got many um, releases coming out. We have the current major release uh, in progress squid. The uh, final release of that should be out in the next couple of weeks. There see that already right now, from the um, As Federico was mentioning, how much stuff is out there today? Well, in, in the uh, upstream uh, stuff, we have a opt-in telemetry system, which where users can report um, about information about their cluster, like how big it is, how many uh, OSDs they have, and the disks they have, what kind of disks those are. And uh, in that system, we have, we're currently see 1.5 exabytes of stuff being used. And these are these are all folks who have opted in. So there's plenty more out there who have not opted in. Who have, who have, uh, it's a very low uh, estimate of how much stuff is out there. Um, in general, um, we also have a few product updates over the past couple of years. We've uh, changed a little bit around the foundation structure. So the Ceph Foundation is an open source foundation that uh, supports the development and, and um, uh, general health of the Ceph projects through uh, efforts around events like the Ceph Day that's being held today. Um, and maintaining the upstream hardware infrastructure and test lab and supporting upstream documentation with some uh, very uh, prolific tech creators. And um, so we recently revamped a bit of the structure there and have some new members like uh, 45 Drives, um, who we're going to have joining at the highest levels. Um, and we've uh, shifted a little bit about our community management. So uh, Nick Rice has served as the community manager for several years. I want to thank him for all his efforts. And um, it's quite we're working with the Linux Foundation um, and some other folks who have outside with marketing and community management. And also, we want to mention the progress of Sethlani. Thanks to him for stepping up. We have the uh, Seth Ambassador program of uh, folks organizing events and helping the different communities of Seth users around the globe. And we've already stepped up to help you then. So, this is, um, I think, our final Seth day of the year. But again, we're going to have Seth Lacan, Seth Full Conference in, in uh, Geneva in December. And we're looking forward to seeing more uh, set days around the world next year as well. So in terms of uh, technology, what, what, what's uh, going on in the current days as well, we have four major focus areas. One is consistent performance. Everybody always wants uh, higher performance and you know, things to go faster. But a, a big uh, problem with storage can be when you have inconsistent performance. If you have lot, most of your operations are, are big. Um, say within one millisecond, and suddenly you have a 10 millisecond or 30 millisecond loop, uh, and it can cause some concerns. A lot of applications can't deal with that very well. So a lot of work we're doing is focusing on not just improving performance, but making it more consistent as well, improving that tail latency. We're also trying to make stuff easier to use. Uh, it's, a, it's always a challenge to make a very flexible and, and um, very configurable piece of software uh, simple for a new person to use, but we're trying to make lots of improvements around documentation, um, automation, and the management tools around it to make that simpler. 
or new users in old. We also uh, are focusing a lot on expanding protocol support, just like Federico was showing in his slides around. Lots of you know, approach towards that, more standardized protocols like NFS, Samba, intermediate and all that. So this stuff can be easily consumed in any kind of platform right now, need storage. Uh, one of the main reasons people use stuff as well is often uh, cost. So the other area we're focusing on is storage efficiency. For a long time, our issue coding, which is a method of uh, maintaining the durability of data without using very much more space, uh, has been very popular with stuff, but mainly with object storage, where the performance penalty of issue coding uh, isn't too much of a big deal. But with uh, block devices like uh, uh, in common use in OpenStack or file systems, the performance penalty today for erasure coding is quite high. So there's a lot of efforts going into uh, making that, um, optimizing that erasure coding and to make it more on par with our replication. So that could be somewhere from uh, like, uh, trying to do three times replication today and uh, using three times the storage uh, of your raw capacity to get that data ready. Or the erasure coding that might only need five times the uh, block capacity, depending on the you know, level of durability you want, and that sort of trade-offs you want to make. So in more detail, there are a lot of different developments coming across different parts of stuff. Uh, in the lowest level of stuff, the greatest level, there's lots of work around some improving performance and, and boost order in particular, um, incre increasing the uh, consumability of the scrum, a platform which checks data and makes it a little bit easier to understand and to use. Um, also now defaulting to using compression with the last few, which is another one of those storage and efficiency improvements. But that's how staff storage data for kind of disk allocation growth. Um, and I think that is all of the stuff is this is a, a target to rewrite the OSD data map and we use a shared data architecture to uh, have much more CPU efficiency, not needing to have any kind of cross core communication, and being able to take full advantage of um, future hard risks that, and flash that needs very, very uh, little CPU to actually get an operation done. So there's been a ton of work going into this. Uh, the, the full kind of rate test suite has been um, ported over to work on top of it now. And there's a lot of been a lot of efforts to complete the new, new store in the back, back end called C Store, which is a, a format that's kind of optimized for very fast devices. Uh, it's assigned log structure to match the device's internal structures. And uh, it's designed for more for future uh, performance enhancements as well. Story though, it, it, and um, in general, undergoing more optimizations though now, and uh, kind of ready for developers to test them out, but not quite ready for production just yet. And we might see that more in another year or so. Uh, Telemetry, as I mentioned earlier, is a, a constant system to kind of report some more information about our customer. We're each these kind of adding a few extra fields to see kind of what how is that being used out in the real world and what that data can tell us about how we can improve stuff. So some things we're adding are more um, analysis of the metrics that we are already gathering and some other, other things like is this a connect cluster or is this an RPW cluster or is this cluster using more SSDs or HDDs, these sorts of things. In school, there are a number of additional uh, ways to manage stuff through the web UI called the dashboard. Uh, there are a bunch of new posts for RPW especially, and generally trying to improve the UI in US for SFS as well. Um, there are also a lot of improvements around the usability of Ceph with Ceph ADM. This is the, the Ceph uh, installation and, and orchestration tool. Uh, there are lots of supports for, for now for uh, Sampla and DBL uh, demons, um, and any of those. And generally trying to um, make manager OSDs and the basics of the system work as seamlessly as we can. Work is our other kind of platform for installing stuff in Kubernetes and a Kubernetes environment. Um, it has support for object stores and uh, 
having a, a DNS uh, for um, virtual buckets, just like you see in AWS S3. Also some extra support now for um, integrating with um, Azure to uh, encrypt uh, OS keys and service keys uh, in a very safe and secure manner. That's a lot of the first rounds. It's um, really sort of around that maybe work out with stable. There are lots of more uh, testing now that being added to uh, get the HA work fully available. That'll probably come later in Tesla. In uh, it's not quite there in Spirit quite yet. Uh, other major pieces for RBD are around um, disaster recovery and. Um, we have a uh, couple methods of doing fast recovery in you know, without being you know, uh, originally the uh, first method was journal based neural, uh, which is kind of writing down every change that kind of happens to a device and replaying that exact journal on uh, the second site. Uh, this is nice, but it's very uh, inefficient because it requires you to write to both the journal and the device itself, so it ha roughly uh, requires twice the IOPS. Uh, so the second method that we've been developing um, is around using snapshots and taking the difference between two different snapshots and just putting playing that difference in the second site. And that part is now much um, more hard to be stable. As the video you was mentioning, we're also working on consistency or support to treat a single a set of uh, images as a single unit for the purposes of the best recovery for so the application that uses uh, a lot of different uh, lists for different sorts of databases or storage. Uh, this can all be updated as one unit. In the uh, world of object storage and RSW, we've got more features around some uh, bucket notifications, which is kind of a very kind of, um, again, S3 API for being able to build it.